some Latvian media as well as those pretending to be them, recently made an information dump. Latvian citizens went to Belarus for a music festival and ended up behind bars. Conveniently for them, a Latvian resident on social network X talks about the detention of four of her acquaintances. The video is captioned, this is how life can turn upside down. Be careful and take care of yourselves. Another user posts this video with a comment. Went to Belarus for a party and now shedding crocodile tears. Next time go to North Korea. In general, nothing is clear yet, but verdicts have been passed. Belarus is once again branded as a prison of nations and a dictatorship. Now, a question primarily to the Latvian media and those with them, as well as to the Latvian foreign ministry, which they refer to. Why escalate the situation and invent things that don't exist? Or do you not care about these young people? Is a catchy headline more important? Yevgeny Gorin tried to get to the bottom of the situation. So on July 26th, four Latvian citizens entered Belarus through the Grigorovshchina checkpoint. Young people, three girls and one guy. Daniel, Polina, Anastasia and Vladlena. They were going to a music festival in Braslav. Some of them not for the first time. By the way, one of the passengers later admitted she decided to go despite having a fever. Well, that's just a detail. And in the car inspection, a standard procedure led to an unusual situation. Here's a bag lying here. I don't know. No, it's not ours. A border control officer saw a small polyethylene bag, 5 by 7 centimeters. And inside, something that looked very much like something very illegal. The Latvian tourists, judging by their reaction, also instantly understood this and unanimously insisted the bag didn't belong to them. However, very quickly, Latvian citizen Daniel had a theory about how this small item ended up in the car of his director. Polina's car. Perhaps it was lost and dropped by one of his acquaintances whom he had given a ride to in Latvia the day before leaving for Belarus. Border control calls in a dog handler to see how the trained dog reacts to the suspicious bag. And the dog's sense of smell is excellent at detecting even the faintest scents. Especially drugs. Do you know where your dog handler is? Dog handler? Who do you need to call him here? It's not just about trying, but most likely someone has it. I can't tell you that. You don't know what it is, right? You'll say it yourself. Now, what's the question? Look, see? What does the person explain? Says he doesn't know. Not mine, maybe someone dropped it. Still in Latvia. What in Latvia? Well, someone probably dropped it. What is it? One of the guys? No. So what is it with you? Huh? So what is it with you? Not with me, but with someone in Africa. Most likely in Africa. Do you understand? Well, it worked. What well, did you see? Got it. Thus, at 14 on 47 on July 26, the service dog detected the scent of something law-abiding citizens shouldn't have, the scent of drugs. Naturally, this is a preliminary verdict. During the car inspection, the Border Patrol found a polyethylene package, 5 by 7 centimeters, with a plant-based substance. Dark green in color. Investigators and officers from the Upper Dvina District Police Department were immediately called to the scene. The found substance was sent for examination, and an investigation is underway. But there are clear procedures for such cases. They are roughly the same worldwide. The car is taken to a parking lot, the wheel is locked with a special mechanism, and an investigative team is called. They conduct a more thorough inspection of the vehicle. Naturally, the Latvian citizens are detained. Note, no one is being twisted or beaten. Moreover, everything is recorded on video. The detainee is even allowed to smoke if needed. The found substance is sent for examination. During the investigation, police appointed an examination which determined that the substance found in the car was the dangerous drug marijuana. 
Investigators have opened a criminal case for the illegal transportation of a dangerous drug across the state border of the Republic of Belarus committed by a group of people. Further investigative actions are currently being carried out to establish all the circumstances of the case. Specifically, the weight of the marijuana found in the car was 0.82 grams. Naturally, the investigator is interested in how the drug ended up in the car. I suspect he might have accidentally dropped something. I won't say someone planted it on me or tampered with the car. I have good relations with everyone. No one keeps such things in my car. And maybe it was him because he called all his friends to find out what it could be. Well, he called right at the border. About the Belarusian customs and border officers. Yes. Do you have any complaints about their work? No, none at all. Do they act properly? I just haven't clarified this yet. No, everything was fine. What bothers me most in this story, story honestly, is that person who was writing because I don't know him at all. And why was he riding with us? I mean, he bothers me the most. But I don't want an innocent person to go through what we went through. I'm not afraid to accuse anyone, but I don't know him at all. He thinks it might be those people who previously rode in this car. Or the guy who noticed it. Provocations from the Belarusian side. No, no, no. No, no, no. So you saw all her actions? Yes, I saw everything. After that, she opens the door, just sits on the seat and sees this. So you saw that she didn't put it there? No, not her, 100%. I'm not accusing anyone. How could it have ended up there, if we assume that... Well, someone accidentally dropped it. Who? Like that. I can't say exactly who. I don't know how I can say who. Well, maybe your friends, maybe. Acquaintances whom I gave a ride. That's all, as I said in my statements. Well, I want to hear it from you, because what's written on paper is one thing. Well, I said yes. I gave a ride to some guys. Maybe one of them dropped it. The day before, it turns out, each of them has their own thing. They smoke what they want. So among themselves, someone smokes something. The fact that Belarusian law enforcement did this, that's immediately ruled out. Now what happened next? Already on July 29th, three days after the detention, the foreigners were released from the temporary detention center. They are not behind bars. Yes, they were given a travel ban. They moved first to an apartment, then to a hotel in Polotsk. Their parents and relatives came to them. Where is the bloody dictatorship here? Is this inhumane treatment? Now, how this story is presented in some Latvian media and almost all propaganda resources of the fugitives. Headline, quote, went to Belarus for a festival, ended up behind bars. And another one, due to the lack of rule of law in Belarus, Latvia's ability to assist such individuals is very limited. Clear. Next. The Latvian foreign ministry still strongly recommends refraining from trips to Belarus. Well, the message is clear. Bad Belarus made visa-free travel specifically to terrorize foreigners, lure them in, and imprison them. As evidence, they use a video of this girl claiming to know the detainees. Her video is captioned, This is how life can turn upside down. Be careful and take care of yourselves. Another user develops the idea, went to Belarus for a party, and now shedding crocodile tears. Next time go to North Korea, I'll give you some interesting numbers. In 2022-2023, more than 206,000 Latvian citizens visited Belarus. The Latvian Foreign Ministry claims that by the end of October 2023, 25 citizens were detained. Can you imagine what a tiny percentage that is? So, I would like to kindly ask the hotheads on the internet to behave more decently and not distort the facts. The head of state commented on the information dumps. They say our four Latvians were arrested. And everyone is howling, oh, he established a visa-free regime to arrest our people. Of course it worries me. I ordered an investigation. It turns out they brought drugs to us. So, what do you think you're doing? Drugs are unacceptable here. 
and we didn't even imprison them as usual, but released them. They settled in a hotel. We ordered, ordered an examination to show them what kind of drug it is. Marijuana. Yes. So why are you bringing it here? We have enough of our own. And they shout that we offended them. We don't offend anyone, especially guests. Belarusians are such people. But don't bring drugs to us. So we don't offend anyone, and we don't intend to. For with drugs, we treated them humanely. I was even surprised that our police are so considerate with them. They were brought to the district department. They started crying and refusing. And then they said, those who smoke these drugs use this car. Either ate or smoked. So why did you come to us in this car and settle in a hotel and conduct an investigation? And they are still offended by us. Why are you offended? Lawyers have a common phrase. The law is harsh, but it is the law. But honestly, in this case, where is the harshness? Four Latvian citizens for transporting marijuana are waiting for the investigation results in a hotel. Although the stance of Belarus, like any other country in such a situation, is natural. In any normal country where laws are upheld, drug smuggling is not taken lightly. The measure of a travel ban for the young people is more than humane. They are not sitting in any dungeons. Yes, Belarus has opened up visa-free travel. We welcome guests. However, this does not mean that drugs can be brought in or laws can be broken without consequences. Now, the main thing is what next? The key to the investigation will be the results of the examinations, including the presence of a genome on the confiscated packet of marijuana. Yevgeny Gorin, Victoria Sharkova, ATN.